What's up and welcome back to another video. This week we're on the final part of the beginner's editing guide, so don't you know it, we're talking about delivery and exporting and the delivery tab in DaVinci Resolve. I'm also gonna have some tips for you guys on how to export in Adobe Premiere Pro as well. Just a quick heads up though, this is not gonna be how to round trip your projects between Premiere and Resolve if you're going back and forth. For that, I've actually made another video of my complete workflow going back and forth and showing the entire process. I'll link that up in the cards as well as down in the description below so you guys can check that out as well if you need it. Before we dive in, I just want to say welcome and thank you so much for checking out my channel. New videos go up weekly all about filmmaking and if you're not yet subscribed, then consider hitting that subscribe button as it helps me out a ton. Also, don't forget to leave a like down below on this video as well. With that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so here we are in Resolve. There are a few ways to start exporting depending on what you're doing. First, I'm gonna start on the cut page because you can actually quick export directly from this tab. This would be very useful if as you're building your edit, you need to deliver a temporary cut to someone or get it to a client for an update or approval. If you use something like Frame.io as well, you can quickly export your timeline to upload your cuts so far for notes and things like that. So two things to get there really. First up on the cut page, there's actually a tab on the upper right here that says quick export. That'll open up a menu for you right here. You can also go to file quick export export and it'll open up the same menu. Since it's part of the file menu, you can get it, you can get to it from anywhere or any tab, which is convenient. Here you have some presets, even some for social media if you want to export there quickly. You can actually sign in directly from Resolve and then post right to YouTube, Vimeo, or Twitter. There's also an H.264 codec option as well for those different internet videos as well. Over here on the right, I also have a preset I've created. So you can see it here. It's H.264 at 1080p resolution. I'll show you how to create that in a minute and customize it, but just know you can create your own presets as well. And then they'll be saved here so you can use them whenever you want. Moving on then to the deliver tab. So you'll probably spend most of your time here when you're actually exporting. At the top here again, we have presets for all sorts of different things. Again, we have all the social medias here, an H.264 master preset, and then some XML options for exporting back to Premiere and Avid and so on. There's also an audio only if you need to reference track for something, for example. Now, if you want a little more control, you have a custom setting here and actually you can click on one of the presets too, and then click back to custom and it'll have the preset options loaded in here as well that you can then go ahead and tweak, or you can just start from scratch and put in all of your own settings. So first, First up, you can name your file and choose location. You then have the option of rendering a single clip, which would be like your final render or individual clips if you're going back to Premiere, for example. That way you're still working with your individual cuts. Then you can pick how to export your video. If I'm creating a master file to archive, I'll probably create a QuickTime DNX HRHQ video if I'm just working with a regular prosumer camera, for example. If you're getting into shooting raw, you need to preserve all of that, then you may wanna up that to something like 4444. The file sizes get much bigger, but once again, that's usually overkill and you could actually be wasting space for no reason. As an editor or colorist though, you should already know what codec you'll need down the line if you need if you happen to need to pull that from an archive file. You can then pick your timeline resolution or go custom and define another resolution as well. I would suggest if you're upscaling your project meaning that you're exporting in a larger resolution than your timeline, you should probably set that up in your project settings if you go under image scaling tab. That way you can specify sharpness and noise reduction if you need. Typically, you don't want to be scaling up though. Because of the compression on YouTube, very rarely it could be worth upscaling your 1080p video to 4K, for example, and then uploading that. But even then, if your footage straight from camera doesn't have the bit rate or the bit depth, it won't make any difference. I digress though. If you're delivering for clients, make sure you get the specifications from them and know exactly what's required. Just as an example, if we look it up here, uh, these are the deliverables you'll need if you're submitting to Netflix there are very specific requirements, so it can get a lot more complicated than simply just exporting a video for the internet. So back to delivery tab, you also have a quality section. For YouTube, look up max bit rates for uploading if you're trying to save space. I'd recommend making it slightly better than the supported bit rates just because of the compression. Or if space isn't a strict consideration, 
then you can just leave it at something like best if that's an option in the codec you're using. Jumping down a bit, you have the option to burn in metadata about color space. I usually leave mine to same as project. There's no reason I would burn in a different color space than what I'm actually exporting in for most of the projects that I do. Then you get some checkboxes. I'll highlight a, a few of them as they're kind of interesting in what they do. First, there's this use optimizer proxy media. This forces the render to use optimized or proxy media generated or linked in Resolve. So if you're exporting a sequence for client approval and it doesn't need to be very high quality codec, like the final render, you can switch proxy media on, for example, and it'll save you some render time because obviously your computer will render like an H.264 file a lot faster than uh, like a DNxR HQ or something. Jumping down, you have uh, this enable flat pass option. This is great if you need to export a final timeline, but you want to bypass the color grading. So that way you have the original raw, for example. You can enable this and hit always on, uh, and that bypasses all of your clips color grading. Most of the time, I don't have the need for this unless I want to save a blank archive copy of a video. If you're also working with raw media, you can check on force debayer resolution to highest quality. A lot of times you can turn down the debayering resolution of raw clips to speed up your computer. Uh, and if you check this, it ensures that Resolve exports the raw clips with the highest debayer resolution possible. Under audio, you have a couple of options, including selecting a different codec and bit depth for your audio tracks as well. You can also choose what audio to output. So if you've assigned only specific tracks to a bus for final output, you can select that here. Under file, you can custom name your project and pick your location again. You also have the option of using unique file names so Resolve can add additional digits to the beginning or the end of your file names to help identify them. If you're exporting in a codec that allows for it, uh, you can also actually add frame handles and that's back on the video uh, section. Essentially what that means is it'll add extra hidden frames at the beginning or end of the clips. So that way if your project is going back to an editor, for example, to finalize, then they have some wiggle room to add transitions or roll edit points without worrying about the hard cutoff points where the cuts are in the clip. Under the file tab, it'll also give your current disk space being used on your computer when you select a file destination to save your project. It'll also tell you if you have enough space based on your export settings after you export. If you don't have enough space, then your render will fail. You can then add your project to the render queue. If you wanna export multiple versions, you can add all of them to the queue as well and then hit render all and it'll run through all of them at once. Last cool thing I'll leave you with is uh, if you want to create a preset, you can come up to the three dots up here and hit save as new preset and then just name it. It'll be added to your little preset folder up here and you can click on the three dots again and go to quick exports and check your preset. Just make sure it's checked. So now when you go back to the cut page, for example, and then hit quick export, your preset is right there and ready to use. This is useful if you find yourself going back to one particular export preset and you just want to get to it fast. With Adobe Premiere Pro, the export settings are mainly the same. You'll just go to file, export media, and then a dialog box will pop up with your settings, same as Resolve. It's a little more beginner friendly as I feel like it doesn't give you all all of the little minute little details to choose like in Resolve so I won't spend too much time going over it. Most options are actually called the same thing or something very similar as well so it's pretty easy to navigate around. Under video encoding settings just make sure hardware encoding is also enabled. If you have a decent graphics card that way it'll speed up your renders. All right so that's actually it for this video. That gives you a good beginner idea of your export settings and what you're going to need to get your projects out there. It's pretty easy and most of the time your export settings are also going to match your timeline and project settings so it's not that hard to kind of get a grasp of what everything is. We went through a couple more advanced things as well. You likely won't be using though unless you actually have a reason to and you know that you need to be using those things. So that being said, that wraps up our beginner series for now. Hopefully you learned something useful and if you did, make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more videos like this and also leave a like down below as well. Comment down below and let me know what you guys learned and what your ideas are for future videos as well. Hopefully this series helped you guys out. Remember there's three other parts I think besides this one that you can go check out as well. I'll link those and create a playlist as well so you guys can refer back to these. Until next time though, go out there and create something then. I'll see you guys next week. A lot of it Really made an effort, promised I would change but Some things stayed the same Wanted to do better, wanted to be great But some things stayed the same